What's up, broskies, and welcome to the One Bear Inn Holiday Special. We're here spreading Christmas cheer, as you can see by the hats. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not going to hang around for too long. You probably already see the uh, time, not time signature, but the timestamp of how long this episode is. So we just want to hang out with you guys for a little bit, spread a little bit of cheer. Um, get in, get out, and let you guys get back to enjoying your holiday, and we will see you guys in the new year. But before oh. we can do that, oh. we got to get to some holiday themed brewskis. Of course. Obi, can you tell the people what we're drinking tonight? I would love to. All right. We have a new Belgium holiday ale at a 7.5% ABV. It's a limited release. Flavors of cranberry and spice and everything nice. That's all we have. Mmm. <laughs> Wait. Let me see if there's more. We do have a box. We do have a box. Tis the season for flavors of cranberry and orange, cinnamon and spice for everyone naughty and nice. Okay. Original. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. Here we go. This is um, the one beer in Christmas special. Merry Christmas. And again. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Okay. You okay. definitely do get the spice. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I was actually um, really ready to hate that. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not a show for the flavored beers very often. No. But. Here we are. Well, and also New Belgium. Not to say that they, they don't make good stuff, but like lately, they've just been so focused on their Voodoo Ranger line. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised this isn't like Voodoo Ranger <laughs> Christmas ale. You know they have to have one, though, right? Yeah, he's There's definitely got to be, be a wearing holiday, a, a Christmas hat. And yeah, like, a holiday uh, Voodoo like Ranger. Like a hoppy, stinky. cranberry, I hoppy, stinky. All right. <clears throat> well, it's been a weird year, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know... A year of uh, following other weird years. Yeah. I don't think we've had a very normal... <laughs> existence on this planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just in general, but in the last couple of years, it's been, it's, it's been strange. It's yeah. been fucking strange to try to... Oh, man. I don't know. Get to this time of the year, and... Uh, I don't know. It feels like... You know, there was definitely some ups and downs of this year, but now it kind of feels like weirdly. I don't want to be pessimistic. I don't want to. I don't want to be negative. Okay. You know? I feel like you're about to. I, that's why I'm trying to get off of this train of thought. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bail. I want to bail out of this. Yeah. But all I'm saying is, it's just each year, for the past couple of years, we've come around to this time of year mm -hmm. where you know you get kind of introspective about a couple of things, especially since we're coming up on the new year. Mm -hmm. And you start looking back on the year, and it's like, man, it was a weird kind of fucked up year. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I always get a little, like, melancholy around, yeah. you know, the holidays a bit, but specifically New Year's. Yeah. I get really, like, introspective, like you were saying, and, like, really, like, clocking the passage of time and being like, that's another one. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really don't, and I think yeah. that's been a big... That's why well, the show works. Problem. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. uh, I yeah I don't I don't spend a lot of time thinking about stuff like that. But then when I do, I'm like, mm, this is why everybody's so sad all the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I say all that to say that, given it's been such a strange past couple of years, you just try to kind of keep perspective on things right yeah and try to remain grateful of the good things that are happening in life we are recording from your new apartment it's true 
as people who are watching can see the scenery has changed for the past like five or six episodes. It looks a lot better outside of this bland box right. you're looking at. I yeah, yeah, you can't tell. Right. But it's a very nice place. We're That's gonna, something we're gonna work on it. To be grateful for. Sure. It's yeah. Like, you know, and yeah. this is a comfortable couch. It is. You know? Yeah. That's something to be grateful for. Sure. <laughs> you know, we're we're no longer in a garage. That's right. That's something to be extra grateful for. Yeah. I have to go in there and clean the garage, but that's not, that's my problem, right? That's no one else's problem. Yeah, yeah. That's on me. Which is what I'm grateful for. That it's not on you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's, you know, there's things to be grateful for. Sure. That's what we always end the show with. Yeah. There's a reason to be grateful, right? That's right. Something to cheers. That's right. So uh, in the spirit of that, we have decided we're going to do the, the our gift exchange on camera. Yeah. So I don't know what you got me. You don't know what I got you. It's true. It's how this works. It's usually how it works. Yeah. I don't want people to think, and we, you know, behind the scenes, we have already worked this out. Right. No. This is all real. No. We as don't, the again, we don't talk off air. Yeah. As the women on Instagram Live say, <laughs> we're getting real with you now, babe. Mm. All right. Okay. So, All right. I like it. So let's do this. You can just open up my backpack. Oh, do I get to keep the backpack? No, I oh. need the backpack. Okay. I need the bag back. back. Well, there's a uh, there's a, 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 a tiny card all the way up here. Let me make sure I get it for you. He knows how much I like cards. I'm just giving you a good time now. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Reach further. Okay, get, I got get it. in the bag. I got it. There you go. Make sure to read that out loud. Okay. I'll let you do yours first. Okay. A gift for you. Merry Heatmas and a happy great ass. From Oh no. What <laughs> Oh I didn't even know this was out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Uh-huh. For listeners, what is it? It is uh Michael Mann's novel. To Heat. Sequel. Yeah, heat the, the sequel uh, the, the sequel novel. No, oh, this is sick, man. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you didn't have it already. No. No, I didn't even I didn't know it was out yet. Enjoy. That's what's up, dude. Yeah. Hardcover. Yeah. So not cheap. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Never skips. Very nice. Angle app. Good. Yeah. Good. That's that's good. Enjoy. Enjoy your read. Very heat missing. Happy great. Uh, I had the feeling this is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> had to do it. Ah, uh, the old merch, the red light merch. I love me a good uh, uh, windbreaker. That Look is that. our patented. Beautiful. Was I, I don't think I was wearing it on the episode. I don't think no, so. No, I didn't wear it yet. Okay, so this is no. people's first time the seeing it. The Maliko bomb. They haven't gone into the bar. That is partially my design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, partially. Partially. Very cool. It's a little different, but. You've been talking about uh, design for the Maliko bomb. For a very long time. Mm -hmm. So finally come to fruition. Come to fruition on this yeah. beautiful jacket. Thank you very much. I You're love You're welcome. It. You're very welcome. I love it. So yeah. Mm, quality. <laughs> That's it, folks. Bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Oh, that's what the spirit's all about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting people's stuff. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yes. <clears throat> uh no, that's not what it's about. You know, that's that's not what it's about. It's about it's about family and togetherness family. and family and 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 uh, and like I said, being grateful for. Them. Sure. So, I mean, I don't know. It's not it's not Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> I was gonna say people can tell us what they're grateful for. We can talk about what we're grateful for. But I mean, I guess you could do that. At any point, any right? time of the year, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a good yeah, idea yeah. to do that. Sure, you go first. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, today, again, looking at something a different way and being grateful for it. Uh, so, if you're not familiar in the Puerto Rican culture, and I can't speak for others, but specifically Puerto Ricans, uh, we like to make something called pasteles, mm. which is a it looks like a bunch of mush that you put together in a little pocket, a little sleeve. Hell yeah. And you put some meat in there. Love pocket mush. Yeah, pocket mush with meat inside. But I swear to you, after you boil it, you, you put some uh, Tabasco on top of there. Or if you want to get a little crazy, some of that nice uh, 
you know, the, the, the Caribbean hot sauce, the scorpion pepper kind, you know? Oh, yeah. Put a couple drops on there. Knocks your socks off. Yeah. It's incredible. Delicious. But it is a pain in the ass to make. Yeah. And uh, so I helped my mom for the first time make the mush. Because my, <laughs> my, my grandma is usually the one who does it, but she's getting up there in age. Yeah. Um, still strong as an ox, but, you know, we decided to take it upon ourselves to do it this year. <clears throat> So I was I was called in, she yeah. tagged me in, and uh, it was a pain in the ass. It was really hard, yeah. <laughs> and it was a lot. But I got some quality time with my mom. I learned some of the recipe. I can't do it on my own, mind you, but mm-hmm. I learned a bit. I gleaned something from that. So mm-hmm. maybe after a couple more years of doing this, you know, I'll, I'll be able to get it down myself and carry on this tradition. Um, and uh, yeah, even though it was hard at the time. I'm grateful that I was able to have that time and to learn about it a little bit more. Uh, you know, we had the salsa music station on the entire time. Of course. It felt right. Yeah. Uh, I left exhausted, but uh, I also got to eat some of it. I was mm-hmm. the first one to test, uh, taste test it, and uh, they're pretty good, nice. if I do say so myself. Um, I guess that brings me to a, a question of best or, I guess, favorite holiday-themed food. Ooh. That's hard. Christmas themed food. Christmas themed uh, food. Any holidays. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean the pastels are definitely up there. Yeah. Just because like we never have them otherwise. So they're very, very specifically for the holidays. <clears throat> um I mean coquito, of course. Yeah, that's that's delicious. That's gotta be up Love there, it. Right? Hurts my stomach like crazy, but it's worth yeah. it for once a year. Mm-hmm. Um Otto's High Dive bar that just opened up around mm-hmm. here. They have a they have a coquito, Ooh. and it's very good. Okay, I'll have to try that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, you know, I I am a sucker for a piggy in a blanket. A piggy in a blanket. I will eat. Would a you dozen consider that, that a, a a holiday? I mean, at least for my family, we tend to only break them out for you know. New Year's or uh, Christmas or yeah. Thanksgiving as is an hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. You know, it's just a starter. A hors d'oeuvre. Hors d'oeuvres. A hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. So, you know, and I know this is very divisive, and we don't, this isn't like a tradition tradition from my family, but I've had it a few times. Um, I, I love a deviled egg. Oh, yeah. They're great. Oh. Anybody who doesn't like deviled eggs, get the fuck out of here. Well, no, I know some people, like, don't like mayo or mustard, and it's like. They can get the fuck out of here, too. Yeah. That, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're in that discussion. Yeah. I just talked sure. to somebody today. Today, today, who doesn't like mayo and mustard? And she was telling me she eats her sandwiches dry. dry? She just raw dogs these sandwiches, dude. How do you get it down your throat? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it just gets just just blocks up in there. She's you just hear like, like a, a cement block. <laughs> just <laughs> like a like a fucking pelican. She's going, <laughs> <laughs> just choke it down. <laughs> I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't Ugh. know. We all looked at her like, ugh. What's wrong with you? She's no. like, oh, yeah, just eat my turkey sandwiches, and just the meat, and I mean, she said, she said the the pickles have some like moisture, some like juice. like like the pickles, oh. the pickles. She's like, sometimes I'll put like oil and vinegar on there, like, oh, nice, nice little wow. treat to yourself. Ooh. It's good, for, nice, nice, exotic. You know who you are. Mm-hmm. It ain't right. It ain't right. We can't accept that. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. So yeah, a good deviled deviled egg. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My mom started calling them angel eggs because <laughs> we don't need the devil up in we here. We don't need the devil. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so anytime they make them, they know that that's my joint, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Here, we made we made angel eggs." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, call them whatever you want, as long as you made them. I don't care." <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's a good one. Most overrated Christmas food. Um. I gotta say ham. Ooh, that's I, controversial. I know, I know. Um, for me, though, for me, I actually like ham better than next day. Okay. A- as it stands, just like a, you know, it's a general spiral ham with the the glaze on it and stuff. Uh-huh. It's pretty good. You know, I'll have a couple slices on my on my plate. I'll leave a little room for it. Okay. But take this from me. The next day, if you, you of course have leftovers. It's a giant ham hock, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. You, you take a couple of those slices, you, you fry them up in a pan, and you put them in a sandwich. Okay. And the, the fatty bits <clears throat> that would normally just be like chewy, gross, you know, throwaway pieces, 
unless you're an absolute savage, <laughs> which respect to you if you, you do eat that when it's like that. But you cook it up a little bit. It, it, it kind of cooks in its own juices a bit. It, it re-caramelizes if you're careful. It doesn't burn. Mm-hmm. You put that in a sandwich. You, of course, add accoutrement to it. Okay. It is absolutely delicious. Okay. Or you can chop it up, put it in, like, rice. There's so much you can do with leftover ham. Mm-hmm. But as it stands, <clears throat> spiral ham, like, just generally, eh, I'll take it or leave it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's okay. It's all right. But it's, it's generally, like, uh, the... The centerpiece of the meal because it's a big protein, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not that special to me. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Ham. Personally. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say favorite holiday meal, and this is gonna be again pretty uh, personalized. It's got to be pepper pot for me, man. Oh yeah, of course. It's the best. Of course. It's a traditional West Indian, more specifically Guyanese dish. Of just like sweet tar, yeah, <laughs> and oxtail. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's um, elixir of the gods. There's just something about when you put all that stuff together and then just dip. You just put some bread in there, or you know, it's just like it's 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 perfect. It's special. It's a perfect. It's a, just a perfect pot. Yeah, of of, of food. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm so over anything gingerbread. Okay. Yeah. I never got it. Yeah. Never liked gingerbread. Even when I was a kid, mm-hmm. they make like gingerbread houses or have like gingerbread men. I was just like, I don't get why is, this isn't good. It's like cookies to me. And I see your eyes. Okay. <laughs> and I refute whatever attitude you have over there. I I don't get cookies that have that have like a spice to them. Mm. Cookies are supposed to be sweet, decadent delicious things yeah. any kind of like little allspice or gingerness to them snickerdoodle I'm like it doesn't taste bad i just don't get it or like the uh the uh like chipotle chocolate kind of spiciness i've never had that i don't know what no. You, no. there's like spicy chocolate <laughs> usually like mexican inspired uh you know i've seen cookies i've seen cupcakes cakes themselves yeah don't do that yeah don't do that that just that's not what i go to my sweets for it's for but I'm a person who their favorite cake is a chocolate cake with chocolate icing. So like it's just got it's all it's like double the chocolate yeah. with chocolate chips in it. I mean that's that's what I'm going for. You're a decadent I'm, boy. Yeah. Yeah. So any kind of like allspice or sometimes I'm like even cinnamon, I'm kinda like I mean I, no, don't get me wrong, I love cinnamon. I eat French toast all the time. I you know you Well actually we us. talked about this a little bit when <laughs> when you had, you know, a box of big red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, cinnamon to me is like, I, you know, sure. Like, I get it. I get what it. I mean, cinnamon is in pepper pot, so I understand. Yeah, yeah. That there, it has its. It's a big uses. West Indian flavor. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is, and I and I I I dig it. I dig it. Mm-hmm. But just like, uh, like when it's just like the main flavor. Yeah, I don't know. Just don't like a spice with 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 my sweet sweets. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I feel about like uh, spicy margaritas. Not a fan. Yeah. Not a fan. I don't go like any drink that is spicy. I mean, we've seen it with some experimental beers too, where it's like a spicy beer. Yeah, like, and they all suck. No. Yeah, they're terrible. Stop it. Yeah. Remember when they? Remember when? Um, I think it was Stone did that sriracha beer. Yeah. Was it Stone? I don't remember I who think, the brewery yeah, I was. I think it may have been. But it's just a big fucking sriracha bottle. Yeah. Ugh. Don't do. Don't yeah. do stuff like that. Just don't do it. Yuck. Yeah. Yuck. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's the uh, Christmas is my favorite year for for holiday themed music. Mm-hmm. And I think it has the best music of the year. Okay. You know. Yeah. Of of any of any holiday. Yeah. Although I can't think of many other holidays that have the illustrious songbook that Christmas sure. has. It, I mean, it's definitely a front runner. Uh, Halloween's close. Oh, Halloween's got some great. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Definitely um, give it a, a run for its money. Yeah, I mean there are some like New Year's songs as well, but they usually blend in with the uh, the Christmas hol- holiday. Yeah. Stuff. Well, and also if they're not if they're not like a like a, a, a New Year's standard, then they're usually like 
you know, we're going to make this night last forever because it might be our last one. Mm-hmm. And all those songs make me want to kill myself. So Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, would you consider uh, 1999 by Prince a New Year's song? Because it is a good one. That's interesting. I don't know. That's tough because that song was made in like, what, 82, 83? <laughs> it was definitely in the 80s, so, yeah. It's when 1999 was, you know, far off. Yeah. So... The only reason I say that is because I understand conceptually that it still works, but it's not like he made it in the 90s when the year 1999 was mm. becoming like a concern of to, like what's to celebrate the new millennium. Or, yeah. Yeah. But then again, maybe people were always thinking about that kind of stuff. I don't know what people's thought processes were in the early 80s. Well, were the they year- looking at because like we now don't look at you know the year 3000 or like mm-hmm. even 2050 i mean it's coming it's creeping up on us yeah. but like i don't see any there's no there's no like um agreed upon uh anxiety yeah <laughs> around that, that the a year, year is gonna bring yeah, yeah. yeah. where we're past that i mean we were young enough to feel that anxiety of, of sure, yeah. uh the year 2000 i remember i was at my uncle's house celebrating the new year and there was this very palpable feeling of like everyone was, you know, it was all, it was my dad's side of the family. So mm-hmm. it was a bunch of West Indians. And they're like, ah, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. It's not going to happen. There's no point in even, uh, even thinking about it. But then as it started to creep up, <laughs> you could feel it. You could feel Ooh. everyone was kind of like getting a little tense. It was getting a little tight. And I, I was, I mean, I was nine. So I was like a kid and I was like, Ugh. Yeah. What what if it happens? You know, what if like what if the world ends? What if everything shuts off, <laughs> and we're just back to the Stone Age? I remember everything. Uh, well, I remember being so like confused as to why it was such a big deal, and everyone's like, "Oh, well, a lot of computers are like set to not go past nineteen nine or nineteen ninety nine, and and that's going to cause a huge thing." <clears throat> yeah, but I'm like, just make new computers. I don't. I'm like, yeah. What's the big deal? You know, I don't mm-hmm. get it. What's the deal with computers? What's the deal? No, and- I, yeah, I, it took me actually, a, it took me like two years after, um, you know, the, the, the Y2K to understand why it was actually a problem. Yeah. As it was explained to me, the computers were just going to shut off <laughs> yeah. because of the year 2000. But yeah. I didn't understand, like, coding and like sure. why it, that would happen yeah so i was just like okay they're just they're just gonna turn off so who cares yeah. <laughs> yeah get a new computer but then i started to think like some i don't remember it was probably another kid in class who told me that like not only will computers shut off but all electrical devices so like planes were gonna drop out of the sky <laughs> and like you know cars would shut off in the middle of driving and like traffic lights were gonna cut off and people just crashing into each other and like you know, refrigerators would stop, so all our food's gonna go bad, uh-huh. and like, obviously, all of our other electronics. People in hospitals who are on, on yeah. you know, well, because the the, <clears throat> the the power supplies and like the the power generators and stuff would all shut off. Yeah, um, once because it didn't. I didn't understand it as 1999 going to 2000. As I understood it, it was the year 2000 was going to create all of this chaos. Right. No, exactly. Me too. That's the kind of like anxiety that. Everyone stewed and and and, and inspired <laughs> upon every. Yeah, it was like a. What was the other one? Twenty eleven or twenty twelve? Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve was the other one. That one was even the Mayan calendar. Dumber, right? yeah, because people like <laughs> they were like the Mayans didn't predict uh, going past the year twenty twelve. So that must mean right that the world is over. It makes sense to me. Yeah, people are so stupid. I know. I God, mean, the so world dumb. will end someday, so they'll be right eventually. Yeah, I mean, the world's going to end um, I mean, probably soon, if we're thinking about it. But uh, it won't be because of the year 2000 or the year 2020. Or 2050. Or the year 2020 or 2050, yeah. Uh, it'll probably be our own devices. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I'm certain of that. What do you think? What's the over-under? Do we, do we even make it to 2050? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. What's this, 2022? Yeah, yeah. we got about... 25 or 27 more years yeah i mean i think the the biggest threat and i love that this is our holiday special the, the, <laughs> the biggest threat i think is probably uh as it, elon as, musk <laughs> yeah well as it has been for a long time nuclear 
destruction. Yeah. Um, given everything going on <laughs> with uh, Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. This is this so, is what we're here for. <laughs> this is this is the this is the podcast. It, that's uh, I think that's probably our the biggest target on humanity's back. Yeah. Currently, it's you know, well, if you look war, if you nu- look longer distance, you know, obviously climate change is going to be the thing. Yeah, that, that's set to be the thing. That will be the thing. Yeah. yeah. If nothing else happens before, <clears throat> climate change will do it. Yeah. And maybe there's a chance of like a giant asteroid hitting us. But I prefer know, the asteroid to, to climate change or to nuclear destruction. <laughs> well, if it's nuclear destruction, then that one really is, that's the same as an a- asteroid. Pretty much, right? yeah. yeah, pretty close. But the climate change one is like that's the one that we have to actually deal with. Sure, you know, we'd yeah. have to figure out ways of, of living life differently, or maybe not just dying. I don't, well, we don't want to le- die slowly. We could learn the way of water. We could learn the way of water. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. And then we all just colonize underwater, and then we ruin that. And then yes. the water's just like a, a like a yellow tinge. Uh huh. Because we're because humans are fi- are filthy. Yeah, we and kill we, all the fish. Yeah, they all have little can uh, plastic pieces over their <laughs> necks. Their, yeah, they're all choking. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Man, how about you? What do you think is going to take us out? Probably um, Elon Musk. No. Uh, Pro- it's probably climate change. It's probably the closest, I think. Yeah. Or AI, actually, no. Maybe AI? AI, maybe. Yeah, yeah. AI. Um, overpopulation. We're at 8 billion now, and we just don't have it. We just don't have the resources. I kind of, I kind of pair that with climate change, though, because they go so hand in hand. Because it's like the more population, the more pollution, the more quickly climate change happens. Mm, that's and, true. You know. That's true. We could just, like, you know, go the Bill Burr route and, like, just murder, like, half. <laughs> Like yeah. he's he was Thanos you know, just yeah just just snap half the people yeah restart if if a government body if it was agreed upon or or if it was taken to a vote rather okay the government body was like listen we can't do this yeah. we got to reduce these numbers but we're gonna kill people at random would you take the chance what's the alternative you, everyone the alternative dies? is just going back to how what like what we're doing now. Well, the alternative. <clears throat> no, let's make the alternative be that. Everyone well, yeah, I is, guess it's too much. There's too much uncertainty if we just sure. keep it up to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the the alternative would have to be certain death for all of mankind because of climate change. Right, and we know that this is happening. Yes. All right, but I'll throw a little. I'll throw a little wrinkle in there. Okay. It's just sped up. The it, it's not one or it's 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 not like listen, people die or everyone's gonna die. Mm. It's people die or everyone's going to die, but everyone's not going to die immediately. Climate change is right around the corner. We know this. Scientists know this. I'd say the next like couple of years, we're looking at uh, winter across okay. the world. Yeah. But not tomorrow, but very soon. Okay. So now you've got this wrinkle of, well, maybe not in my lifetime. Or maybe I can survive it, or maybe it's not mm. going to be as bad. Or somebody will figure something <clears throat> out in that time. Or you can guarantee that we'll be okay, uh-huh. but you might not see it because they're going to kill people at random. You know, I've always had this issue with sci-fi movies that do this, where it's like, oh, we have to struggle to survive uh, long enough to, to fix this thing, even <clears throat> though it's 100 you know, million years in the future. Yeah. Or, or the thing, especially in, in these movies where it's like, we are going to uh, put like our DNA in something <laughs> and send it off into space. Yeah. And it'll gestate and it will eventually become human beings that land on a planet eventually. But it's like humanity doesn't. What science fiction is that? It's happened. <laughs> There's been things like that. That one sounds interesting. Well, no, like, I I forget the exact stories, but, like, go ahead. What? Game I play with the redhead girl. Yeah. What redhead girl? (laughs) Oh, for Horizon? Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, no, that's not a bad, that's not a bad, uh, 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 point, yes. Um, spoilers for Horizon Zero Dawn, um. (laughs) 
and Forbidden West, I suppose. Oh, dude, I got like just a killer fucking spoiler from God of War. Because nope. people just post on... I'm not going to say anything, <laughs> but people just post on TikTok, you know, their stupid little edits and shit. That's what Sherry said. She said she saw spoilers. Bro, it makes me fucking livid. Why? Your edit's not entertaining. It's right. not funny. It's not cool. Oh, you put like fucking Snoop Dogg behind it. And like, it's just, Why would you do that? Yeah, it sucks. That sucks. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I got I got some major shit, shit spoiled for me, and I'm just like... That sucks. I don't even want to fucking play the game. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to... It's okay. I'm, I'm glad you got it out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, like, for instance, something like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, where it's like... Yes, humanity survives as a species, but everyone has to die first anyway. Yeah. You know? Like, everyone dies somehow our DNA is able to live on and become human beings again to repopulate somewhere else. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> that always makes me feel like, yeah, but this is post-apocalypse. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter for any of us because we're all done anyway. Yeah. And that always bothers me in stories because it's like, it's so uh, alienating in a way. How so? Uh, because it just it, it it means nothing for us living today, and only that our no, no. history, our cultures, our you know our our literal human race survives. But at the same time, I feel like if we're all wiped out anyway, what does it matter? What what's the like? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want why to? Why would you want to do that? Really, though, why would you want the human race to go beyond after we've all been wiped out? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, say, there's a a, a life ending uh, asteroid coming to Earth, mm -hmm. and we've we we have to send out uh, like one spaceship to Mars yeah. that's going to repopulate Mars for humanity. Yeah. Sure, it matters for the people who are on that spaceship, but let's say there aren't even people on there. It's just like DNA and, and babies or something that are, are being born there in a, a, a test tube or something, right? Yeah. What, what does it matter to me on Earth? We're all doomed. <laughs> what, what, who cares if, the, if humanity survives at that point? I don't. Well, it doesn't matter to you personally, yeah. Yeah, it, the universe has decided to kill humanity like yeah that's it who who like i have no that does not give me any any closure <laughs> any warmth any comfort to know that humanity will continue because well, we're one, all done one would argue that isn't that's the very definition of empathy Right? I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's like Merry Christmas. Selflessness and, and thinking yeah, it, yeah, but for for who? Like for the ones who survived. But okay, but specifically specifically in like a horizon Brian and Michael and <laughs> specifically. For like a Horizon Zero Dawn uh instance. These are all just not all, but some of these are copies of people people's DNA. They're clones. Uh -huh. Okay. And Others are just born in this post-apocalyptic world that they're like thousands, hundreds of thousands. No, no, not hundreds. Thousands of years behind modern technology. Okay. And they're struggling in this terrible circumstance that they've been thrust upon. Okay. Like, why not just be like, eh, it's that's over. It. That's it for us. We, you know, we, like, we had a good run. Yeah. Well, what's the need? I, I don't understand the need for humanity to continue to just crawl its way uh, to, uh, forward, if if our time's up, our time's well, that's up. That's just human nature, baby. I guess so. Yeah, that's really what it is. All I'm saying is, it does nothing for me personally. Right. You know. So your original question was, was, would you agree upon a government-sanctioned mass murder? Uh huh. But you didn't know if you were going to be killed or not, mm -hmm. or you just let nature take its course. But nature is like right around the corner. Like there is going to be an apocalypse. I and we already the science. It's like it's like in Don't Look Up. Like we okay. know it's about to happen. Right, right. I uh, I'd let us all go. 
Because <laughs> because backing a government sanctioned purge is not very punk, baby. <laughs> I gotta say that. That's true. So, you know, I uh, you couldn't you couldn't trust the powers that be to actually randomize the selection, right? No, and on top of that, I wouldn't want to be part of a culture that allowed such things to happen. Mm. You know? Yeah. Just the the feeling of guilt if say I made it but somebody in my family didn't make it mm. wouldn't be worth the exchange of of life. I don't know. But it wouldn't be I mean, where it's not it's not like there was your fault. Well, it was to pull the lever and say yes, I'm I'm for this. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. If it was up to a vote and then you voted yes and then you survived, someone shot your brother in the face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd have a little bit of survivor's guilt. That, I guess that, that's true. Yeah, you yeah. probably would. I don't know. I guess that's then. It, really, I guess the question goes back to, uh, or it, it's kind of more to your point about uh, what you were saying with that um, fascinatingly frightening rant was about was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The idea of like is what's worth living for if you've decided that like nature has run its course and like we are at a point where you know this is it yeah. what, what are we fighting for after that right right so uh yeah i mean if you if you survive then what do you what, what did you survive for does it does it put your life in perspective does it make you want to be all that you can be or do you just or do you just live with the guilt of of being the person who survived in this post post purge world yeah and well, then what what if what if there is a utopia after that you don't get to spend it with the people you would all, you would just hope i guess to be lucky and have true. every one of your family family and friends survive but yeah. that's just not how it would happen well and then you're a wholly selfish person at that point because you don't care uh, talking about empathy bringing that back yeah you don't care about anybody else who's you know people got blown up or whatnot that's true but that's just us yeah who knows how many people would vote yes i mean you could you could make the argument that's for the greater good the greater, the greater good. good um would but, you agree to it if you knew that you were gonna die the vote was all right. We'll we'll uh, we'll kill half the universe. You're included. <clears throat> I mean, definitely not then. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you've already if you've already decided that nature has run its course, and you're like, well, I don't want to be here anymore. No, fuck them. <laughs> if I don't get to stay, nobody stays. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, now it's kind of all over the place. Yeah, that's true. It's not from a place of empathy or love. No, for no, society. no. It's no. It's, it's my own self interest. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a tough one. I wouldn't want to be uh, given that question because I wouldn't be able to decide. Yeah, it'd be tough. It'd be very tough. Yeah, it is. It is. <sighs> and I'm glad we talked about that on the One Beer and Podcast well, look, Christmas I, 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 special. I, I, I want to end this topic by saying we all die. So yeah. that's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So hey, people are gonna die. Yeah, I did see Pinocchio, and it's yeah, it's yeah. it's uh. Well, yeah. holidays will make you existential, and Guillermo will make you existential. That's true. It's very true. So, made my uh, best of the year list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah You'd did. know that yeah, if you yeah. listened. Yeah. Well, but anyway, but that's okay. I mean, it's fine. You know, we can't. We can't uh, expect that from. I won't care when I'm dead. Our family members, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll be dead soon. We people, all will. With with people <laughs> with family and friends not listening to. The podcast. A, uh, a human so, lifetime is very short. So. If there's one thing that we can guilt you guys into doing, or two things, I guess we can guilt you guys into doing, it's uh, listening to this podcast because people are going to die. You know, yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. And I'm going to die, and he's going to die, and she's going to die, and she's especially going to die. Oh. <laughs> I mean, she is. Oh you know? Jesus died. <clears throat> Yep. And that's why we're all here. He died for us. Yeah. That's what I'm told. So. I read that somewhere. Before we all perish from this earth. Uh-huh. Especially Celine. Uh, <laughs> 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 what we need you guys to do is two things. We need you guys to listen to this podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. 
That's three things. So that's four things. Well, right that's there. all. It's all wrapped in one thing that they have. To okay. Do, you know, that's the just gift click, to us. Click on the YouTube episode. Yeah. And then while you're there, just like, share, and subscribe. Okay. We're at what ninety eight subscribers. Something like we that. We get two more easily. Yeah. You know, and that is yes. You can count that as your Christmas gift Please. to the podcast. And then number two. Listen to my Christmas EP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of self-interest. <laughs> yeah. I have a Christmas EP out. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why I decided to make a Christmas-themed album, but I did. And there's, there's four songs, and they're all about Christmas. Yeah. So who else do you know? Who, what, what other independent musician is, it make, made a holiday? I'm not fucking Michael Buble. <laughs> like, I have no... I get nothing from this except for the joy of the holiday. Sure. And spreading that joy. Yeah. There's uh Like we did today. <laughs> like we did today. <laughs> this whole episode. Uh-huh. I have a song where I diss Santa Claus. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a couple love songs in there. Um, uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you got that plug in. <laughs> so, to recap... Gift exchange was beautiful. Yeah. Food on the holidays. Great. great. Mm -hmm. But there's some overrated stuff. There is. There's definitely overrated dishes. Also, the apocalypse is right around the corner. Sure, and we all die. And uh, that's what the holidays are all about. Sure. Yeah. This is going to be a weird one to listen back to. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if there's one thing that I've learned is that 2022 makes you really think about life and death. Mm Mm-hmm. So... <clears throat> Here we are now. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's remove these beers. Uh, this is what's naturally coming out. Okay. Yeah. This was unscripted. This yeah. is exactly no topics. Just to- just talk about the holiday. Yeah. And this is this what is came where, out. This is you know what? Goes. This is natural. Yeah. This is the real. Okay. I'm happy uh, in, uh, that I'm here and alive and celebrating this holiday. Yes. But also, people are going to die. Look, l- let me frame it like this. With the acknowledgement Please that we're it. all going to die, mm-hmm. I'm glad to spend this holiday alive with you. There we go. That's, that's nice. That's how, you, that's how you bring it on back home. Thank you. All right. Let's review these beers and get out of here. Let's do it. All right. This was the Holiday Ale from New Belgium. It's their, uh, it's cranberry spice and something Something nice. nice. Everything nice. What'd you think? Too sweet. (sighs) Yeah. Mm. Maybe a little too sweet. You know, it's it's not bad, though. I I think it it mostly pays off for a lot of what's selling. Uh, It definitely tastes like the holidays. I'll I'll give it that much. Mm -hmm. Uh, It does have that kind of like... It's very spiced, sweet, <clears throat> decadent flavor. Decadent. Not getting much on the cranberry. Yeah. I, I will say that. I think a a bit of a sour kick from a cranberry might help mm, it. Mm, mm. Like, you know, a natural flavor of a cranberry. Like a mm-hmm. natural Just nice sour. Nice little, little tartness. Yes, a exactly. Little tartness on the end. <laughs> that would have been a nice uh, balance for what I think is generally overpowered in its sweetness um for that reason i'm gonna give it a three and a half i think you could do better for a holiday ale mm. uh but you could definitely do worse yeah 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 yeah. three and a half yeah yeah i think i'm gonna agree with that <clears throat> uh if you have this amongst other assorted ales and lagers mm. yeah then this would be a nice little nice little surprise mm-hmm I wouldn't. This was not be the centerpiece of of my nope. bar on a holiday. Nope. Because I agree completely that the cranberry is is all but missing, and that definitely would have really brought this up to maybe a four, four and a half. Yeah. If you get that that tartness with the allspice, as it stands, it's kind of just like a sweet cinnamon drink. Yeah. Which we I've made my feelings <laughs> known about cinnamon uh-huh. and spice. Yeah. So. A unanimous three and a half Agreed. for this holiday ale. Do you think we got everything out that I'm, we needed to? I think we purged. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we'll come back in the new year with, I, I, I really, 
confidently feel with a, a fresh set of attitudes mm-hmm. and platitudes mm-hmm. and magnitudes. Latitudes. You know latitudes and longitudes. Mm-hmm. Magnitudes. I feel like we needed to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Felt good. It cathartic. Just, yeah. Yeah. Cathartic. It's mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. So when we come back in the new year, we're gonna come back with 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 just a just a just a new lease on life. Yeah. Because maybe we all do die, but before we do that, we're gonna keep rocking on this podcast. You gotta live, baby. That's right. You gotta live before you die. You gotta live before you die. Couldn't have said it better myself. And so I won't. Okay. This has been the One Beer In Podcast holiday special for myself, Marco Dupa, for Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Ho, ho, ho. For Sherry the Lemon off camera. And for Celine, who who knows, you know? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Drink delicious beer. Have a beautiful holiday. We'll see you next year. We love you. <laughs>